AABIP video educational series. Fluoroscopy Sea Arm Basics Part 1 Radiation Safety In the United States, fluoroscopy training is required by the Joint Commission for Hospital Accreditation for All Physicians Using Fluoroscopy. Other requirements include annual testing of equipment, documentation of dose metrics, ensuring skin exposure thresholds are set, and reviewing and following up on dose thresholds that exceed this limit. Radiation exposure goals include using as low as reasonably achievable dose or ALARA. Limit the radiation exposure to the staff and the proceduralist and prevent skin injury to the patient. It is important to monitor the dose during the procedure. Too gray of skin exposure will cause transient skin erythema. At 3 gray, it is time to reorient the beam. And at 5 gray of exposure, the procedure should be stopped. Factors impacting patient radiation dose can be divided into those that can be controlled by the operator and those that cannot be controlled by the operator. Those that cannot be controlled are patient size and medical history. For larger patients, the dose rates are greater. The dose will double for every two inches of body mass. The image quality is typically lower and the procedures are longer and more radiation of a higher energy may be given. It is important to note prior radiation exposures and if they have occurred over the same skin area or not. What doses were given? How long since the last dose? and if any skin injuries occurred. There are several factors for radiation safety that are controlled by the operator. Tube current or voltage, beam on time, tube proximity to the patient, pulsed fluoro or frame rate, image intensifier proximity to the patient, image magnification settings, collimation and projection angle. First, tube current and voltage. This foot pedal has low current, high current, and sign mode. The low current pedal, highlighted in green, is what will be used in the majority of bronchoscopy procedures. The blue highlighted pedal with a plus sign called high intensity fluoro should not be used for routine bronchoscopy procedures. The sign mode should never be used with bronchoscopy procedures. It provides a high radiation dose that is not necessary for bronchoscopy. Beam on time. Limit foot pedal time as much as possible. An alarm will sound at five minutes of use. A hand controller permits the staff to distance themselves from the C-arm and reduce radiation exposure. Tube proximity to the patient. Here, the x-ray tube is raised closer to the patient by pressing this button on the C-arm. This will deliver a high dose of radiation to the patient. When the x-ray tube is moved away from the patient, the dose to the patient is reduced significantly. Raise the bed or lower the x-ray tube to reduce radiation exposure to the patient. As a review, the x-ray tube is here and the image intensifier is here. Pulse fluoro or frame rate. For routine bronchoscopy procedures, choose the lowest frame rate possible. For technologies such as body vision and Illumicide, use a frame rate of at least 8 or greater, but only for specific portions of the procedure. Details are discussed in the body vision and Illumicide videos. Image intensifier proximity to the patient. The further away the image intensifier is from the patient, the more radiation noise and scatter occurs than if the image intensifier was closer to the patient. Image magnification. Magnification is useful, but can increase patient dose. Automatic brightness control will increase milliamps to maintain image quality, using sparingly and only when necessary. Here is a non-magnified C-arm image. Here, the image is magnified times one. Here, the image is magnified times two. Collimation. Tight collimation reduces scatter and improves image quality. 50% reduction in viewed area will reduce scatter and scatter dose by 
press the collimation button shown here. Here is a real-time example of collimation. Projection angle. Image projection is mainly a concern with long procedures. Change the angle of the C-arm to reduce skin exposure. Personal shielding and proceduralist dose reduction. Doubling the distance from the source will reduce dose exposure by fourfold. Lead aprons and thyroid shields will reduce dose by 80%. Eyewear will reduce dose by 35% to the eyes. Wall-mounted shields are very effective and will reduce dose by 40 times. This is an example of angling the C-arm with the x-ray tube angled cephalad and then caudad. The lead apron should be free of visible defects and cover the upper chest and legs to below the knee. The thyroid shield should cover the neck completely. The dosimeter should be worn outside of the lead apron over the chest. This monitors staph exposure and should be worn for all procedures using fluoroscopy.